Hi everyone, it's Diane back again from Tattered Edges Design at my craft counter here. Um, I thought I'd try making some faux postage stamps. I've done that before and it's, it's kind of fun. It's a nice little project. So for this go around, I pulled out my reproduction Sears catalog from 1970, which originally was 1900. And there's all kinds of cool images in here. Um, I went with small ones for obvious reasons, size more than subject really. And then I grabbed some, these are old end papers from a vintage book because I wanted the aging so the image isn't going to pop right off like something that's white. So it looks kind of yish. So that's that. So I'm going to fussy cut these, which nobody wants me to watch. Nobody wants me to watch? You know what I mean. Nobody wants to watch, not even me. So I will be back when those are done. Okay, obviously we're back. All cut out. This did take about 20 minutes, so it's not the cookiest of crafts in the world. But there they are. And you're saying, what are those? Well, I just happened to think of um, just doing some color ones anyway, just for fun. But they are the backs of, you know, the freebie type uh, greeting cards you get from VFW or something. They're the little picture on the back of some. They're just like the perfect size. And yeah, they're glossy. They're more modern. But just, you know, for fun, just to make. I thought I'd do those too. And then the best part is, the part I cut out, I thought I could use that as to mount them to. So, that's the next step. I'm going to glue them all on, which as I said before, no one wants to watch me do that. So once they're glued on, we'll be back once again. Okay, we have been glued down. And I should have pointed out, in case anyone's curious, I just use the Aileen's Tacky Glue. It's what I use pretty much for everything. So that's how they're glued down. Uh, you can see they all fit fine. Now, to make them look stampy. Um, there are different ways to do it. You can just certainly just cut them out. There's no law that says they have to look, you know, have the edging like stamps. But um, you can actually take a sewing machine without thread through the needle and run and then cut it apart that way. I tried that once and to be honest, I didn't have a whole lot of success with it. I didn't, I don't know, maybe I didn't have my stitches spaced right, but I wasn't totally thrilled with it. What I use are just um, craft scissors. These work pretty good, mini pinking. So that's what I do. And as you can see, I left, you know, some room around so you can cut. So let me cut a couple, just to give you an idea. Um, it's entirely up to you how much, you know, how large you want your stamp to be. There's no laws on that either. They're all different sizes. They're even different shapes. Some are circular, some are triangular. So however you want, I generally leave some room around because I'm going to do some little rubber stamping and embellishing yet. So just cut. I, I don't draw it out. Um, you know, I mean, measure it out with a line. If you don't trust your, uh, here's my little garbage can. If you don't trust your cutting that well, certainly draw a line if that makes it more comfortable for you. But there, there's one. And we'll just do one of these just to show. Same thing, you can just come in wherever you want. When they're like this, be careful you're not cutting, you know, where maybe you don't want it for this one. And if you're not too sure, err on the side of too big, you can always come in. And there we go, there's another one. Um, I didn't mention anything about sizes on this, just in case anyone's curious. They're pretty small. See, it's about an inch. That's even about half, three quarters. So there you go. Okay, I'm going to continue cutting and I'll be right back. Okay, yes, we are cut out. So you can see this went fine. And then they're all different sizes. You know, if you want to, them to look, you know, like an actual real block of stamps and want to figure all that out, more power to you. 
but I just do it this way. There's the modern ones. But they're cute, they're fun. So on the old looking ones, I'm gonna distress the edges. That's walnut stain with a very chewed up dauber. And just on the edge, just like that. I think we all know how to distress edges. And I'm not gonna make you watch me do all of these. But that's it, you can make it as light or heavy or don't do it at all as you want. So there's that. And I thought I'd point out, um, I mean, we've all seen postage stamps, right? But if you don't, you know, really pay attention to them, I got a bunch of real stamps here. I was just gonna point out a few things, like what you might wanna put on them. You could certainly just leave it like this if you're happy with that, it's cute. But if you wanna write, you know, this says, I can't read it, something hummingbird. You know, what it is, like it was from a set, an amount. This is a foreign, well, to me, a foreign stamp, Australia. Here's a more modern one. But they almost all have at least an amount, a place. And that being said too, in case you weren't thinking along these lines, um, if you're doing it for yourself, you know, just to put in your own journal or something like that, you can certainly do whatever you want. But, uh, oh, here's an old one, three cents. Um, if you are going to try to maybe sell what you do or give away or something more like that, do not, well, that's not a stamp, do not write USPS forever, any USA, the USPS will frown upon that. So don't do that. You can, um, you know, you don't have to put a country on it, but you could make one up. You could, uh, some of them for myself, I put my initials on it. Uh, you could, you know, use your family last name, make up, you know, Fredonia or something. But I just wanted to point that out. Be careful of really copying a real stamp if you want to do anything with it, other than put it in your own journal. So, okay, that's that. I'm going to distress these, and then we'll come back and do some decorating. Okay, our edges have been antiqued there. We're all set. So, uh, my next step, what I do, is sort of decorate them, if you will. Like I said, you can leave them like that. They're still kind of cute, and you can kind of tell it's supposed to be stamped. But I usually make them look like they've been used, postmarked, etc. Um, I usually put a number in the corner to look like, you know, an amount. And this is the set I use. This was a gift. I think the person bought it on Amazon, but I don't really know for sure. But it's got a nice size group of numbers in there. That's why I use that. And then I have a bunch of... Um, postmark stamps. It was a Bow Bunny set from several years ago. I I don't know if you could find it, you know, on eBay or something, but it's not a current set. You can see I've used them a lot. And I have a large postmark too that I may or may not use here. I, I've had that a long time. Bizarro, Green Fills, whatever. But anyway, that. And I probably will write, I was thinking maybe antiques on this, like you know, it was a set of postage stamps called Antiques. And I just grab, happened to grab, I've got a few black markers. This is a Faber-Castell excess, which I think is kind of running out. Uh, yeah, which is going to be good because I don't want it to be too in your face. So, and a piece of scrap paper to uh, stamp over. So what I did, I kind of broke them up into what I thought might be like sort of sets, which for the amount. I thought I'd make that sound the same. Like, so this is like household, children's furniture, etc. You can do whatever you want there. So let's just grab one and try it. So let's see. If I write, if I have a number lower, I mean, I'll write up a side. I'll try that. And I'm just going to use my own handwriting. It's kind of neat. And grab a number. Let's see what number do we want these to be. 
Uh, I want to know. Three. This is just a plain cheap ink pad. Black. So, let's see. I'm going to put it in the lower left. See? Look kind of real. Kind of cool. And then I'm going to put a postmark on it. Um, and for those of you who are saying, well, that's great, Diane, but I don't have this set. Uh, it's, I admit it's, it's better if you have these things. But before I had this set, I used to take a nickel and draw around it to make, you know, like one of these things. And then write a city or something. And these lines, anybody could draw that. Uh, there are postmarks that are just a few lines. I think I don't know if that they do that nowadays, but I've seen that on older envelopes. You could do something like that too. It doesn't have to be, you know, look so perfect. And let's face it, a lot of postmarks are smeared or upside down or what have you. So you, know, you can kind of do whatever you want there. So on this guy, so we have kind of a lot of room there. We're gonna put one of these on these. I don't bother to put these on a block or anything because. You know, like I said, we all know postmarks aren't perfect. I don't think you want it to look perfect. If you do, you want to use a block, be my guest. And I can never tell which way these go. Let me hold it to the light for a minute. Uh, la, la, la. I think it's this way. Yeah, it's this way. So, and the same thing. You can do, you want the whole thing on there? Fine. I tend to put them off because that's what a lot of them look like. And there you have it. Kind of cool, huh? Let's do another one. Uh, we'll do the same set, per se. So I'm going to write. And number three is what we took. Four. And we'll use a different postmark, like this came from somewhere else. Let's see. That one, it's kind of close quarters there. And we'll take another round one. I'm holding it to the light so I can tell it goes. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing. This one I'm just going to kind of nip the corner. See? Are we looking kind of realistic? And from here, you know, you can do whatever you want. You, um, some, a lot of stamps do have like, um, like these, a line around. You can do that. I'm not going to because it's going to run into my writing. But that might be nice too. So there. Should we try one more? Let's do one more. Which one? Um, let's do a hobby horse. It's kind of cute. And we'll pick a different number for him. Uh, what should be on the kids' toys? Well, how about just four? Okay. And then there's a lot of room to groove up there. I, I'll use one of these bigger ones. It goes this way. There, look at that. Okay, I'll do, you know what, I'll do one with the post lines so you can see that. Uh, well, we'll here, we'll do another kid one as long as we have the four out. Come on, Pen. See, it's supposed to look like the postmarks that go across. And it's the same thing. You could do it all the way across. You could break it up. I think I'll just go about half. There you have it. Okay, kind of cool. Well, I'm going to continue on, and I'll come back at the end when they're all done so you can see how they turned out. Okay, we're all done. So what do you think? I think they turned out really nice. I like these. So I'll show you a few up close just to get an idea. So now this one, 
I put postmark kind of more over the image, I think is fine. This one, well, we did that one already. Uh, what didn't you see? This one's got another mark across. And this one is just more in the corner. But I think these turned out cute. Um, and I'd like to point out, if you do postmark, I kind of, when I wrote antiques, just kind of with the pen, you know, and it didn't look so great. So I put a postmark on it and you'll never know, right? So you can camouflage little mistakes like that. But these, these are cute. I'm pleased with them. And the color ones turned out nice too. Now these, I just wrote my initials on it, just by hand. And you can tell it's by hand, I don't mind. But those, um, this, these two, I did put a marker line around. And that one too, I didn't quite get the corner right, so I postmarked over it, you can't even see it. And this too, I just drew in a three, because the markers, or stamps, were a little big for that. But you know how cute, in your journal, or, you know, put it on a note paper, send a friend a letter, or something like that. And I know some of you are probably thinking, well, I don't have an old Sears catalog, what am I supposed to use? Uh, well, one, you could use your imagination. For example, these are ones I did several years ago, but this is uh, scrapbook paper images. Some of them are quite small. And these two, you can see I didn't postmark. Oh, I take it back. That one is. But uh, this just hand-drawn, big deal. Those are stamp letters. Stamp letters. That's a painted background there. This is just on uh, watercolor paper. So it's just a little mini scrapbook image and drawn and stamped. I mean, how cool, how easy. So that's that. So if you don't have to worry about, you know, copyright images, you're just doing it for yourself. Scrapbook paper, magazines, you know, old greeting cards, look around. Wrapping paper might work. So um, these antique -y ones might make it way to my Etsy shop someday as a digital, but I'm not holding my breath because my husband has to help me do all that. And he usually has better things to do than digital downloads for Etsy. So that's it. Thanks for watching today and have fun out there.